But how'd they pull the transformation off? Let's take a deep dive into how the MCU turned Josh Brolin into the Mad Titan. According to the visual effects supervisor Kelly Port, whose company Digital Domain worked on creating Thanos for Infinity War, the number of people it takes to complete a major studio movie's visual effects has exploded in recent decades. Marvel's own Iron Man 3 has over 1,800 people credited in its visual effects department alone, a dramatic step up from the special effects heavy blockbusters of decades past. Port said to The Verge, we were reflecting back on Titanic days, the late 90s, where a big effects film would be considered around 300 shots, whereas Infinity War, in contrast, has over 3,000 visual effects shots. And now it's here. Or should I say, I am. Speaking in an interview with Art of VFX, Marvel Studios' overall VFX supervisor Dan DeLu gave some insight into the amount of work that goes into a movie's visual effects before anyone's even powered on their editing rig. Speaking of Avengers Infinity War, DeLu said, This movie wasn't grounded like Winter Soldier or Civil War. It involved 8 to 10 foot tall aliens and battles on other planets. We knew the movie was going to be massive and had to plan accordingly. The company's plan, according to DeLu, involved dividing up the movie into individual sequences that would be awarded to separate VFX houses. Each house would get a sequence that would tell a complete narrative. This way, each house could maintain the look and feel of the sequence while minimizing the need for shared shots. The responsibility of introducing Thanos to the world in Infinity War was shouldered by Digital Domain, which took on a workload of 513 shots, amounting to over 40 minutes of screen time. Their work involved bringing Thanos to life in every scene except the one on Titan, a sequence which was instead handled by Weta Digital. While you might not have heard of the studios by name before, you're certainly familiar with their work. Weta is the studio behind the Lord of the Rings Gollum and the new Planet of the Apes movie Caesar. While Digital Domain's been working in movies since Jane Cameron's True Lies in 19. 1994. Founded by Cameron and acclaimed special effects artist Dan Winston, Digital Domain has been working on large-scale superhero movies since X-Men in 2000, and have since had a hand in making the first Thor, the third Iron Man, Spider-Man Homecoming, and Thor Ragnarok with Marvel Studios. Even with the team's extensive experience, it took over 340 people from the company nearly two years to bring just most of Thanos' parts to fruition, which really puts things into perspective when it comes to how much pure labor it takes to make movies of this scale work. Directors Anthony and Joe Russo met with Brolin and the digital effects artist several months before live shooting began, to both see what Marvel wanted to accomplish with the character and also to determine what the effects companies would be capable of turning in. Digital Domain's Kelly Port said it was a proud moment to show off Digital Domain's first Thanos test to Brolin and the directors on the actor's first day of shooting. Port said, They were all very excited about it, and I think there was a collective sigh of relief that we could pull this off. The results of Digital Domain's first test were encouraging, showing that the company's artists were capable of maintaining Brolin's humanity as they encased his performance in a virtual skin. It's just the way it is. I'm not, I'm just a messenger. According to Dan DeLu, the early test showed how much we could do with the character. It showed that Wood could take exactly what Brolin did on stage and reproduce it with the CG character. The test put Brolin at ease letting the actor know that he didn't need to oversell his performance to make the character feel alive. As Kelly Port put it, I think what was really great about his reaction was a sense that he did not, as an actor, need to overplay the acting. Seeing that the effects team would be able to effectively translate a lower-key Thanos performance in all of its subtleties was a boon to the filmmakers, especially Brolin, who was worried about how he would come off an emotion-captured performance. No one was more nervous about bringing Thanos to life than Josh Brolin. Playing the Mad Titan wasn't as physically demanding as his live-action performance as Cable in Deadpool 2, but it was emotionally draining. As Brolin described it, I was more nervous doing that than I've been for a long time. Brolin at times found himself having a hard time striking an imposing presence while wearing an unflattering motion capture suit. Brolin said, You've got to walk around in a onesie and imagine yourself as an actor with some impact. I'm sitting there and I'm looking like I look, which is not 700 pounds. I'm purple and 8 feet tall. To record Brolin's performance, the production installed motion capture cameras all around the movie's sets, allowing other actors more space to interact with him. The movements of his body were recorded by those cameras, while close-up shots were recorded by HD cameras that were attached to a helmet and pointed back at his face. All the footage was then put into a massive database, with every tiny movement of Brolin's face being used for reference when it came time to replace his features with a computer-generated Thanos model. The goal, according to Kelly Port, was to have the CG model match the emotions of the real-life actor. Port said, we look at the results, you look at Brolin side by side with Thanos. Is he conveying the same emotional expression? Is he conveying the same emotion with his face? And we make a subjective call. 
One of the more interesting hurdles to overcome in bringing Thanos to life wasn't making sure that he looked like Josh Brolin, but rather making sure that he looked like, well, himself. Fans of the MCU have been anticipating Thanos' arrival ever since the end of the Avengers in 2012, when the big purple space monster first turned to the camera with a sinister grin. This was years before Brolin was ever cast or considered for the part in Infinity War. So how did the pre-existing Thanos from prior movies fit into the character's final form? According to Port, the Digital Domain team started their Thanos modeling with the old look, and slowly incorporated Brolin's features. There was no magic to the process, just a long back and forth between their teams and the people at Marvel. Port said, We tried to find that balance, but we did introduce more of Brolin, I think, than in previous Thanoses in the films. The effects team's efforts weren't immediately met with enthusiasm. Upon the release of the first footage of Brolin as Thanos, many fans criticized the new look, finding that too much had changed between the initial and final versions. The most difficult aspect of bringing Thanos to life had to do with its quiet, reflective moments. While an effects-heavy battle scene has lots of moving parts from a VFX perspective, it's also easier to cut corners when the screen is so busy with meteors, explosions, and Spider-Man antics. In other words, it's not that hard to make the Purple Space Man fight the big green guy. It's much harder to make you believe the Purple Space Man can cry. Speaking with Art of VFX, Kelly Port said the most complicated Thanos scene is a sacrifice of Gamora on Vormir. Port said, Many of the shots of Thanos in this sequence are very close and very emotional, so it was extremely important that Brolin's performance come through for this scene. The importance of nailing Thanos' ability to physically convey emotion can't be overstated. One false move and the filmmakers fall directly into the uncanny valley. Once you remember you're looking at something made in a computer, it's easy to be taken out of the story. You'd basically be watching Jar Jar Binks cry, and there's nothing engrossing about that. How rude! While the idea of getting into such a pivotal mocap role was daunting, Brolin has since gone on to call Thanos, quote, one of the most favorite jobs I've ever had. Part of getting into the character involved immersing himself in nearly 50 years' worth of Marvel Comics history. Of course, Marvel Studios didn't just send Brolin to the local comic book shop with a gift card. According to Brolin, they sent me over this Bible, just all this information. It was a massive thing, and yet even that was maybe a sixteenth of what there was to learn. As anyone who's ever read comic books is well aware, the internal consistency of the characters and their stories can sometimes be a nightmare, especially as characters mutate across decades under different writers. The comic book and Marvel world is not only extremely emotional to people, but so in-depth, there's no way to learn it all. But you try to do what you can. I started reading and I was in awe. The cliché goes that eyes are windows to the soul, which is really just a way of saying they convey subtlety. They squint or widen to show fear, shock or focus, conveying emotion through tiny micro-expressions. And when it comes to a monstrously evil figure like Thanos, seeing those emotions can make all the difference. According to Anthony Russo, who co-directed Infinity War and Endgame, even though he's despicable on so many levels, there's a part of Thanos that is very empathetic. He has a very complex inner life, and he's not all bad. The filmmaker also called Josh Brolin, a performer who's capable of delivering that kind of complexity, where you have that level of violence in him, but at the same time you have that level of sensitivity. All of Brolin's acting work would be for nothing if Digital Domain proved incapable of mapping Brolin's face onto a monster, but fortunately, the studio was up to the task. According to Port, what we really focus on is the eyes at Digital Domain, and there's a ton of work and a huge amount of detail around that. The company doesn't treat the eye as one object, but rather as layers of intersecting objects, making the final product feel more complex and alive. All of this goes a long way toward making Thanos feel like a real person, and that realism, in turn, makes him so much scarier. Another one of the tricky parts of animating a CGI character has to do with making the audience believe the character actually exists on the game plane as real actors. The most important element to focus on in this aspect is lighting. According to Port, if the lighting is not good, it won't look photoreal. A CGI character starts off being lit by nothing. When the character is placed into real-world footage that is saturated with a certain kind of lighting, a lack of similar lighting on the CGI model will look disastrous. Speaking to Art of VFX, Port said, As we began to experiment with lighting ideas, we soon discovered that Thanos looked his best with slightly more complex lighting with various colors rather than monochromatic light. Many of the scenes Digital Domain was tasked with took place in darker settings, on spaceships or stormy planets, giving the team some flexibility when it came to lighting Thanos' skin. For the scene when Thanos arrives on Earth in broad daylight, they had to contend with making him look like he was being lit by the same sunshine as the performers. Port said, we found that having Thanos walk through the dappled light of the trees was very effective for integrating him into the shots and giving him depth. The years of work paid off with Infinity War's debut. During an interview conducted after the movie's release, Port said, The excitement of the audience's reaction seeing the film for the first time was really, really cool for me. We do it for the love of the craft, but we also do it for the love of entertaining. The reception from the audience is so rewarding. It means a lot.
Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite Marvel movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.